This chip, the CD4106BE, has six Schmidt triggers with inverted output. And at pin 7 and 14 is our supply voltage. And I'm going to be using 5 volts and 10 volts. And the reason for that is that's how you determine what the trigger voltages are going to be for the Schmidt trigger. 5 volts are going to be one set of triggers and for the 10 volts going to be another set of triggers. Now this is what I'm going to use to find out what they are. I'm going to use a 50k ohm resistor. I'm going to use that as my voltage bridge to vary the voltage on pin 1. Like I said, I'm going to start with 5 volts, slowly bring it up, and we'll on the positive side, we'll find out what that trigger is. And then when it's triggered, I'm going to reduce the voltage, and we'll see when it turns off. So on the positive side is going to be a higher voltage than on the downslope on the negative side. And we're going to do that for both the 5 volt and 10 volts. And here's the video. Now I've got this set up on 5 volts and I'll be watching the scope to see when it triggers. Okay, now we're up about half a volt. One volt. Two volts. There it is. Just about three volts. Okay, let's find the off value. There it is. About two dot four. Okay, let me turn this all the way down. Now I'm going to up the voltage to 10. Okay, there's 10 volts. Now we're going to see how it triggers with 10 volts. Again, we'll be watching the scope to see when this triggers. Okay, five volts, five and a half, there it is, just under six volts, okay, now let's see, we can't find the off trigger. There it is, about 4.1 volts. Here's the results for the 5 volt supply. And the on voltage was about 3 volts, about 2.9. And the off voltage was about 2.4. And here's our results for the 10 volt supply. The on trigger was about 6 volts, and the off trigger was about 4 volts. Now I'm going to leave the voltage on this chip at 10 volts. 
the Schmidt trigger at pin 1 and 2, I'm going to apply a signal to it. And we're going to take a look at the scope with the uh, yellow trace, the input. And we'll take a look at what the output looks like at pin 2. And that will be the green trace. Then after that, I'm going to put two of these in series. And we'll still take a look at the input at pin 1 of the first Schmidt trigger. But we'll take a look at the output of the second Schmidt trigger at pin 4. And that will be the green trace. So we can see what the phasing is from pin 2 to pin 4. Now I've got the Schmidt trigger inverter hooked up and what I'm going to do is on the yellow trace that's on pin 1 that is going to uh, increase in not frequency but amplitude and we'll see what happens to the output at pin 2. Okay, now I'm going to start raising the input and as we can see there's nothing at the output uh, just about there we go all of a sudden we have reached the on threshold and I still have the voltage on 10 volts. Okay, let me increase the input. And even when I bring it up and distort it, it the output is a nice square wave. Okay. Notice that it's uh, about 180 degrees out of phase. Okay, now I have hooked up two Schmidt triggers inverters in series. Now let's take a look when I increase the signal. And now notice that it's pretty much in phase. It shifted a little bit, of course, because of the time it takes to go through two of them but it's pretty much in phase now this is a very simple circuit it is a a stable multi vibrator and as you can see all it consists of is one of the schmidt triggers inverters on the chip and we've got a 100k ohm resistor between pins 1 and 2 and on pin 1 we have a dot zero zero one microfarad capacitor going to ground and here's what it looks like as it's running okay here's the a stable circuit and I'm using a dot zero zero one microfarad capacitor there and a 100k ohm resistor there and as you can see it is clocking away now I'm gonna add a 1 meg resistor into this Get in there. all right I think we've 
got it wired right. Yes, we do. Okay, so now I can vary it. Up to our 100K. To a much lower frequency. Now some of you might uh, be wondering if there's a signal at pin 1. And there is. And this is what it looks like. It's a triangle wave at pin 1. And we've got a square wave at pin 2. And of course, it varies with that 1 meg ohm resistor. Thanks for watching.